All right, this is going to be another classic uh, Ring of Honor review. This is going to be Glory by Honor 11, The Unbreakable Hope from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, featuring Kevin Steen and Michael Elgin in the main event. Uh, I know the Royal Rumble is this weekend. I'm sure there's a lot of excitement in the air, so I'm going to try to keep this as brief and as quick as uh, uh, possible. Uh, part of the reason why is um, this is a Sinclair show. This is when Sinclair uh, took over the company. Uh, this is the first show that happened after Jim Cornette got, had gotten fired. So the bottom line is this is a combination of great stuff, and the show also features, it still has that feel of, yeah, you know, this is why we stopped watching Ring of Honor. Or this is why I, you know, I, I wasn't that into the company anymore. It just reminded me of why, you know, the show definitely reminds you of why Ring of Honor wasn't the same company anymore. Um, but, you know, I would say that it, it does feature two of the best matches of 2012. It was kind of like a return to glory uh, for ROH. You could just see a lot of the handcuffs were lifted once uh, Jim Cornette had gotten fired. Uh, yeah, so it's the first Cornette free uh, Ring of Honor show uh, since his departure. So th I, th I think that's part of the re reason why the show was such a big hit. Uh, the show is not great from top to bottom, though. Like I said, though, it features a lot of crap. A lo a lo it, it, like I said, it just reminds you why uh, a lot of people felt unpassionate about the company. So uh, it is a mixed bag. But in, in some ways, it, it, it is like the last one of the last great uh, Ring of Honor shows. Uh, so let's let's get right down to it. The first match tonight was the Bravado Brothers taking on Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander. You know, not a bad way to start off the show. At the time, Caprice and Cedric, uh, they brought a lot of flavor, a lot of energy to their matches. And the Bravados, uh, they were actually wrestling in Pro Wrestling Noah at the time and getting better. So you saw a good effort from both teams. Uh, next match, you had Mikey Mondo, who was like a cornet guy. Remember, he was in the Spirit Squad. Uh, taking on the prodigy, Mike Bennett, coming out there with Maria. Maria looked great, though. You know, she was in great shape. Um, you know, th she, she was basically... You know, distracting Mike Mondo throughout the whole match. And, uh, you know, it was like a good sports inter entertainment style match. You, you you definitely saw a lot of creativity here. You saw a lot of bumps that probably wouldn't have necessarily taken place if uh, Jim Cornette was, uh, you know, heavily involved in structuring the match. So, you know, the match definitely, uh, you know, it, it, the, the when, I, when I first saw this show back in the day, and like I said, you guys, I, I never got to review the show. When the show came out on DVD, I actually bought it at Final Battle 2012. But at that time, I was unable to do videos for a couple months, if some of you guys might remember. But, you know, it, it was a really long time ago. So, you know, this is one of the last great ROH shows I never even got to touch on. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, so the next next match was uh, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas uh, taking on Red Titus and uh, B.J. Whitmer. Uh, you know that the Haas and Benjamin pairing uh, in Ring of Honor. It it was uh, yeah. I mean, I, at first I thought it started off great. You know, for the first couple of months or for the first half of the year when they debuted, I, you know, I thought they were fine. But as time went on, you just I, I just kind of felt um, I felt like they were hurting the company more than helping it. Um, so, so yeah, and, and the same thing with like Charlie Haas. I was I just wasn't a big fan of the guy. You know, he, he used a lot of uh, Angle and Benoit uh, maneuvers for his move set. I just thought he was kind of uh, lacking at the time. Benjamin, kind of like the Andrew Wiggins of uh, pro wrestling. You know, just uh, you know, definitely a lot of talent. Uh, a lot of athleticism. I, I just thought, you know, Shelton Benjamin's lack of passion for pro wrestling, uh, you know, kind of held him back from reaching his potential. Then Rhett Titus' uh, tag team surprise partner was the returning B.J. Whitmer. So, you know, at the time, Haas and Benjamin were heels. This is like your typical, you know, uh, you know, Ring of Honor, Sinclair television match. Just really not much to uh, get excited about. Uh, so next up, you know, probably one of the best reasons to buy this uh, DVD is Jay Lethal versus Davey Richards. Survival of the Fittest 2012 rematch. Uh, and also, it's a homecoming 2012 rematch as well. Davey's first title defense of uh, 2012. But, you know, by far, this is the best Jay Lethal, Davey Richards uh, combination. Uh, you know, Dave, Davey lost a lot of passion for uh, Ring of Honor and pro wrestling. He thought the company had lost his heart. But I would say with Davey in this match, Jay kind of, uh, I think the firing of Cornette kind of, um, you know, I, I think it kind of motivated Davey to a degree. And, and at the same time, giving him an opponent like Lethal. You can see as the match progressed, it, it, you know, it, it, it awoke in the beast and you kind of got the old school Davey Richards there. You know, D Davey just, you know, he just he just wasn't as good. 
you know, the, I remember that whole year when he won the uh, ROH world title. Just something was missing from him. But, uh, you know, Lethal and Davey, it was just a return to form here. This just definitely just felt like these guys had freedom to go out there and just do their thing. I mean, the match had great near falls, great spots, great intensity, very, very stiff. Um, you know, very submission oriented, just uh, just exciting stuff, just very crisp just, uh, you know, just awesome, awesome stuff. Just definitely one of the best ROH matches of this decade, I would say. And I would say that, you know, my memory is not that good anymore, especially when it comes to the newer ROH stuff. But I would say that, uh, you know, this is definitely probably the third best match of 2012. Probably the best match of 2012 minus the Michael Elgin classics, the, the two Michael Elgin classics. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, the story of the match with Jay Lethal was a big win for him. This was kind of, you know, phasing Davey out and, you know, pushing Jay Lethal to the top. And uh, the show before this at Killer Instinct, uh, Jay Lethal had a match with Kevin Steen. And uh, Steen actually spit on Jay Lethal's mom. And then it caused Jay Lethal to kind of erupt and, you know, start throwing a temper tantrum. And he actually took Jim Cornette and, uh, you know, threw him to a, threw a table backstage. It was, it was pretty funny. Just threw him, you know, just kind of tossed him. And uh, that was kind of uh, Jim Cornette's exit. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do my uh, Jim Cornette impersonation. Uh, you know, he, uh, <laughs> you know, Cornette was kind of, um, you know, a, a lot of people hated Cornette. A lot of people just kind of thought that he, you know, he, he, I, I, a guy like Austin Aries too. I, I remember Trademark did a video when Cornette got fired. Uh, he had that, that, that song, we're not gonna take it. So, so Cornette was kind of, um, you know, kind of a traditionalist, you know, kind of, he, he wanted to, you know, uh, showcase Ring of Honor on television, you know, his way. Uh, so he, you know, he would say, I think he would say to like Kevin Steen was like, oh, Kevin, you can't fucking wrestle like that in Ring of Honor on TV. You got to change your fucking style. And, you know, if you want to fire me, go ahead and fire me. You go to fire me, but you might as well shoot a fucking angle with me to get me off of TV. Have Lisa just throw me through a fucking table. So that's my Jim Cornette impersonation. He's, um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, 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 you know, it's funny. Like, I love listening to Cornette. I love listening to his opinions. I think he's really entertaining. Obviously, he's passionate about the kind of wrestling that he grew up on. But it just seems to me like he hates wrestling now more than he loves it. So, but, uh, but you know, Cornette was just a bad fit for ROH. ROH was not trying to be like the WWE. They, they, you know, the the success, the the, the key to the success of ROH was just to be underground and just be different. It wasn't try, it wasn't to try to appeal to people on TV. And I, by, by the way, like I'm one of the guys that was totally against ROH getting on TV. That was just me. I know some people were mixed on it. Some people wanted them to grow and get better, and still be the alternative on television. Uh, I just I just never thought ROH fit on television, to be honest with you. It was just, you know, Cornette and ROH, it was just a bad fit. And, uh, you know, this was the show where uh, Ring of Honor was finally Cornette free. And you could definitely see the uh, benefits of it. Uh, so next up, we had Roger Strong versus Tadarius Thomas. Uh, Roger cut a great promo. Roger was definitely coming out of his shell saying that, you know, Glory by Honor is one of the biggest shows of the year. And, you know, he shouldn't have to face a... Uh, a non-worthy talent like Tadarius Thomas. So in, insert uh, Rhino, uh, the uh, the gore man, what do you call it? The man beast, Rhino, um, against Tadarius Thomas. And, uh, you know, it ended up being Rhino versus Tadarius Thomas. And not a good match at all. Probably the worst match of the night. Uh, Tadarius Thomas comes out there with his unorthodox offense. Uh, really unorthodox. Just a lot of kicks, a lot of just weird you know, judo style offense that, you know, just didn't get much of a reaction. Uh, Rhino, you know, I, I would say this about Rhino. I, I've never seen anyone in pro wrestling that had so many ups and downs like Rhino. I mean, uh, he had his moments in ECW. Paul Heyman had a hard on for Rhino with the gore, gore, gore. You know, you know, Heyman did a marvelous job of promoting Rhino uh, during the invasion. Uh, but at the same time, I remember things like, you know, Rhino and Tajiri had a house show match and Vince McMahon came out and said, this sucks, uh, you know, shut the lights off, that this match is over because it's that bad. So, you know, I remember Rhino got fired at WrestleMania 21 and, you know, then he bounces back and, you know, goes to TNA and wins the world championship at Bound for Glory 2005. So, you know, I, I like Rhino. Rhino has a lot of potential. I remember I was watching... Um, smackdown with my brother when when rhino debuted and he was like man i've never seen anyone like rhino i mean so obviously he had a great look that could appeal to kids and everything uh you know he he looked like a rhinoceros but you know 
And just a lot of ups and downs. When he went, when he came to Ring of Honor, though, I remember he faced Kevin Steen for the world title at uh, what was it, Death Before Dishonor, and it was just one of those shows that just got no buzz and you know, a lot of uh, lackadaisical feedback. So I, I just don't think Rhino in Ring of Honor was a good fit. It, it was kind of like you know, you know, TNA's trash or whatever. You know, so, some people will make that analogy. But uh, so move on to the next match. We had Adam Cole taking on Eddie Edwards in a television title match. Yeah, not, not as good as I remembered. I, I, I thought this was going to be better. Um, I, I think Cole and Eddie, I, I confuse this with a PWG match. I think they, they had a match in Pro Wrestling Gorilla that was much more crisp and just much more seasoned than this. Cole was a little bit bland at the time. Uh, this is when he was still a baby face. I remember Mickey Babylon had, had stated that, you know, the problem with Cole is just he's, he's just a little bit too bland. Uh, but, you know, I have to say, since since like this time in 2012, Cole has really kind of metamorphosized himself and uh, ha had just become a lot more well-rounded since then. And Eddie, Eddie at the time was uh, great. You know, I, I, I thought Edwards was definitely the better wrestler out of the two. And, um, you know, he was coming off of that great world title reign and the feud with Davey. And, you know, he was still good. The, the match was still good. The match definitely still had its moments. But uh, Adam Cole gets the victory there. And, you know, a good match. But just I, 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 was, I was just expecting better from both of these guys. Um, you know, because this is the one match that was going to put the show over the top for me, and it, and it, and it didn't really quite age as well as I thought it I thought it would have. Uh, next up, we have Scum, uh, Steve Carino, and Jimmy Jacobs uh, taking on the Briscoes. So the Briscoes and Jacobs have had wars going back to the age of the fall days. This was kind of just a, um, you know, just not not on the same level as as even that feud from 2008. This, uh, you know, this is just the Briscoes. Uh, the Briscoes were just definitely. You know, I thought the cornet influence, at first, I thought it was going to help the Briscoes because Jay had cut that great promo at Best in the World 2011 when Cornette had, had, had just got there. And I, I thought Cornette was kind of, uh, you know, giving the Briscoes a shot of life. But when you watch them in the ring around this time, they've definitely toned down their style. Uh, you know, Mark Briscoe was just, you know, they, they, they became more, you know, kung fu artists or sports entertainment guys. Yeah, it, it it just definitely didn't feel like the old Briscoes. It was just a, um, this just felt, you know, this is just one of those matches that just felt like a, a St. Clair television match. There's really not much I can say about it other than Carino and Jacobs get the dirty victory with the low blow. Let's move on to the next match. We had Kevin Steen taking on the unbreakable Michael Elgin in the ROH World title match. So, yeah, the match ended up being great. Um you know, for, for two bigger guys carrying a lot of body fat, you know, Elgin's carrying a lot of muscle, uh, you know, Steen at the time. You know, I have to say Steen, Steen is in much better shape recently in the WWE uh, than he was back then. Um, you know, I, I think one of the problems with Kevin Steen's uh, ROH World title reign, uh, he was really disappointed uh, at Border Wars the night when he won the title. I remember him saying, like, you know, I, I, th I think people had trouble logging in that night, so a lot of people couldn't see it. Uh, maybe there was an issue with the stream. I, I can't remember the situation. So when, when Kevin found out about that, he he kind of said, oh, you know, I got so excited, but maybe this title victory doesn't mean that much if, if not that many people saw it. So maybe that affected Kevin's motivation. Maybe Kevin was ready to get motivated and get his ass in shape for this world title reign. But I wasn't a big fan of ROH or the Kevin Steen world title reign at the time. I just I just thought it was kind of I just didn't think they could get it going. Um you know, Kevin Steen formed a, st a stable called Scum, but still, like, when you look at Kevin's title defenses for the majority of that year, I mean, what really wasn't anything special. Uh, this is one of the few bright spots against Michael Elgin. I, you got to give it up to Elgin. You know, I think Steen felt a lot of pressure to deliver here because Elgin and Davey had, you know, tore it up back at WrestleMania weekend, that showdown in the sun. But, uh, you know, the, the match, you know, it kind of started off a little bit weird. You know, I, I mean, it, both guys were just kind of moving in slow motion at first like i said they're carrying a lot of weight so it, it took a while to get going but just tremendous feats of strength from both guys great stunts great action great spots um you know elgin just you know was just incredible at the time i, I mean he, the way he moved steen around just carrying him like he was nothing i mean there was crazy spots off the top rope i mean the the, the finish with steen doing the package power driver to elgin I don't know why Elgin trusted him to do that, but uh, it came off great. It came off safe too, which is the most important thing, and it, it just ended up being an awesome world title match. I don't, you know, when I first saw the match, I was kind of blown away by it. I thought it was debatable. You know, is, is this better than the Davy match because it was that good? But you know, watching it back, I don't know. It's just something about the atmosphere is kind of off. I just don't think it aged as well as 
I remembered it. Um, but no, take nothing away from these guys. I still give this like four and a half stars. This is definitely one of the best Ring of Honor matches of this decade that I've seen. You know, I haven't seen enough recently, but when we're talking about, you know, the first half of the decade, uh, you know, the, the two Michael Elegant classics are definitely going to be probably in the top 10 matches of the decade when it's all said and done. But, uh, yeah, man, just, just just a great match right there. A great ending, too. Just this The, the show, I would just say, was a nice shot of adrenaline um, for those those of the guys that didn't get along with Jim Cornette. And then they did the great finish with uh, kind of kind of a play out of the movie 7 with uh, Nigel giving Kevin a uh, box. And uh, Kevin opens up the box, and <laughs> and it's uh, the El Generico mask. And it was just a great ending to the show. So so definitely, the, the show the show definitely has, uh, you know, there's two great matches on the show. It's pretty much a two-match show, to be honest with you. Adam Cole and Eddie Edwards is like three and a half stars. Maybe if you're being generous, you could give it three and a quarter, or three and three quarters. But, uh, you know, Jay Lethal, Davey Richards... Um, Steen and Elgin, two of the, the two of the best matches of 2012. So if you haven't seen the show, go out and check it out. It's it's one of the, I would say it's one of the last bright spots in the uh, in the Ring of Honor catalog, without a doubt. All right.